What's up, everybody out there? How you doing? Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail over here, Paper Live View. I want to welcome you new viewers, you returning viewers, and you subscribers. Thank you so much for just your support and, you know, being subscribers, you know, watching uh, the videos. Uh, your support means a lot to me in that area. Thank you for commenting. I appreciate it so much. I really and truly do. We're reaching a milestone over here as it relates to R&B Divas. And you know what? I am excited about it. I started out covering R&B Divas album of the year. I started in the year 1989. And from 1989, I went to 1980. Down to 1980, I came back up to 1990 and went all the way through to 1991, where we are right now. Excuse me, 1991, 1999, <laughs> where we are right now. And then the next uh, album of the year, R&B Divas, we will be covering the year 2000, and I think I'm going to stop in the year 2000 as far as covering albums of the R&B Divas, and I'm going to then pick up and just cover um, the R&B albums of the year for uh, Soul Man. I think I'm going to do that. It's what it is. I think that I have Pretty much done a great job on my end as far as what I wanted to do is introduce these divas, kind of get to know them, kind of see what the trends was, was like, you know, just to keep myself abreast to, you know, certain things. You know, I. Yeah. 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 I think I did pretty good. <laughs> I know I cut that off real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> But let's get right into it. We have in the top left-hand corner, Nia. I don't think she pronounces her name Maya. I think it's Nia. If it's Maya, I apologize. You know I butcher her name over here. We have in the bottom left-hand corner, Kelly Price. The top right-hand corner, Brandy. In the bottom right-hand corner, uh, you have Lauren Hill. You know, right off the bat, when I am looking, you know, at at my uh, divas, at my soul, man, you know, I can kind of just come to a conclusion just based off the pictures, so to speak. And I said this once before, I'm going to say it again. You know, it, it could be the times, you know, the times are changing, trends and everything, they're changing as well. And so I have to just really and truly just stop and have to consider that when I'm talking about my R&B divas, because I'm used to what I would call R&B divas who could definitely, you know, like, I, I mean, their voices was is probably as big as the stage and as big as the band, <laughs> you know. And, you know, I'm not finding that, you know. I don't think that, you know, the R&B divas I've covered in the 90s, I'm not saying that I want people to understand it. I'm not saying that they cannot sing. There's just a style of singing that came along in the 80s that I appreciated. And that's when you get those opera type vocals that you hear in the music of the 80s, R&B divas during that time was, you know, incorporating that operatic, if that's a word, uh, type of style within their music. So you don't hear that as much. Like right now, I could tell you that I appreciate you know, my opera divas, you know, and I might just cover them over here. I never thought about that. Let me write that down. I never thought about covering my opera Ooh, that's going to be good. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Let me write that down because I have some opera divas that I love. You know, I've actually been to a couple of opera uh, shows. And one in particular, of course, is the um, uh, Three Mo Divas. I went to see them. And I'm here to tell you that was definitely a show. So you know how I can get long winded. I don't want these videos to be long at all right now. You know, I'm trying to keep up with my time. And it looks like speaking of time, my battery is about to go down. I'm sorry about that. I'm about to lose power. And I don't want to do that. So I apologize. Hopefully I can catch it before it shuts off. But anyway, all right, there we go. So uh, so that's a style that I'm used to, and I, I, I just appreciate it. Anyway, moving right along. We're at the five-minute mark, and let's see if I can do this in five minutes. 
These, who we have, I think Maya and Kelly Price, this is their new album. This is their first album out. So congratulations, ladies, just being nominated on your first time out. And then you have Brandy and Lauren Hill, who are, you know, kind of knee deep in albums, you can say. Uh, Brandy, if this is the year 1999, right? And as it relates to Brandy, I know Brandy came out in what, 1992? And so she came out in 1992. I'm just going to guess. This might be her third album. No, this is her second album. So mm, that's interesting that she didn't release an album, you know, two years after her first release. But anyway, it is what it is. So this is her second album. Okay, congratulations to her on that. I know that first album was definitely um, one of my favorite albums by uh, Brandy. You know, you're young, you're in high school, and you remember all of that. Uh, music, you know, with her and Queen Latifah and Yo-Yo and MC Light when they did the remix to, uh, what is it? Is it I Want to Be Down? Is that the one they did the remix to? I could be wrong. I'm not quite sure, but they did a remix to that album. I think it was I Want to Be Down. Yeah, they did a remix, and I'm here to tell you when they did that remix, oh my gosh, like, I can't tell you what that was like at the time, you know, being in high school <laughs> and when that remix came out, I mean, everybody was like just bananas for that particular remix. You know, Brandy was already, you know, a household name with the single I Want to Be Down just right off the bat. I mean, we loved Brandy and embraced her immediately. And I definitely think that she was marketed to, you know, the young audience at the time. So you could say she's definitely one of those kid, kid stars, you know, that they definitely did not try to mature. As I think about it now, it looks as if Brandy matured with her audience. And I think I like that about her now that I think about it. You know, she, we the, the age she was, and she just kept maturing, you know, and the only thing I could think of, of course, is that, you know, uh, that pregnancy and marriage fiasco that she had, but they was trying to keep her image squeaky, squeaky clean and polished. And I understand that, but, you know, that was almost kind of like a downfall. But we, those of us who, you know, was the wiser, you know, we looked at it and we was, we raised our eyebrows and we shrugged our shoulders and we turned aside eye because we kind of knew what the what's up was, you know, if we was really truly paying attention to her and stuff. But, you know, it's what it is. You know, we, I think at the end of the day, we still all appreciate Brandy uh, so much. You know, Brandy, when I think about Brandy, and this is me just talking at the top of my head now, you know, when I think about Brandy in her relationship with Ray J, her brother, and I think about uh, Tony Braxton in her relationship with uh, Tamar, it's almost kind of like, you know, siblings, you need to stay in your lane. <laughs> Sorry. You, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, Ray J don't come for Brandy, Tamar don't come for Tony. You know, it's one of those kinds of things like, I don't know why I was thinking about that. It was kind of like, just know your place, so to speak. So Brandy comes out and to me, I didn't have the album. So I'm only aware of the singles that were released from that album. Uh, and of course, you know, she had that major hit with The Boy's Mind, uh, which was um, a major, major hit uh, for her, you know. And of course, Have You Ever, which I believe was a Diane Warren song. And I like that song a lot. I, I did. Now, here's another thing, and then I'm going to move away from Brandy when it relates to this album, but I do believe that it was definitely a breakout album for her. She kept that momentum going. But what I will say about Brandy is that, you know, people, I think she has the title of being the vocal Bible. I've heard some people call her, 
but I still have yet to see it. I'm not saying she can't sing. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying is that I have yet to embrace her as that singer that everyone says she is, you know, and I think it has a lot to do with her material. You know, if she has those, you know, one of those belting songs that I so admire, then I probably would go like, oh man, yeah, you know, Brandy, you know, she has it. But just to have a great voice and to be able to sound real good, like, man, like, I know that Brandy can sing, but I just don't know if Brandy can sing. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't even think at this moment in time, you know, I would, you know, we have people who can sing and then we say we have people who can sing. I'm going to say it this way. I would say Brandy is a singer. Okay. <laughs> so you have sing, singer, and singer. <laughs> so I would say right now, Brandy is in the middle uh, <laughs> for me. Now, speaking of singers and singers, let's jump right into Kelly Price. See, there I go. I'm already at the 11 minute mark, and I told you I'm trying my best, but you know, I just never have an outline for this. You know, I just like to just let it flow, and it's flowing. We have Kelly Price here, and this is Kelly Price's first album. And isn't it interesting that here we have Brandy, you know, kid, young, um, you know, very teeny tiny, you know, and she can sing. But then we have uh, Brand, I mean, not Brandy, but Kelly Price over here, who, for the most part, has had a difficult career when, when it comes to her weight. You know, it, it was kind of like, yeah, girl, you can do it. We know you can do it. You're writing, you're producing, you're doing all these kinds of things for all these other people. But do you have the image that is going to sell records? And of course, here she is. She shows up in 1998 with her first album, Soul of a Woman, of T-Neck Records, uh, which is being distributed through Island Music, I believe it is, Island Records. And, you know, she comes out <coughs> straight out the gate with a very, very, very uh, uh, hot song, a hot track, called Friend of Mine. And I remember my aunt <laughs> who, you know, called me up and said, have you ever heard of this song called Friend of Mine, you know, by someone by the name of Kelly Price? I said, no. And of course, you know, she had the cassette single. I listened to it and I was like, oh, okay. Okay, Kelly. And there you have it, <laughs> you know, and I've been hooked on Kelly Price ever since. But now get this, Kelly Price is probably not my favorite singer, though. She is one of those that I would definitely go listen to. But, oh gosh, Kelly, I don't believe I'm saying this about you. I don't. But I'm going to say it. Kelly Price is one of those shouting singers, one of those yelling singers, one of those loud singers. Uh Maybe like, you know, people would say that they don't appreciate about Patti LaBelle. Kelly Price would be one of those. And of course, she grew up in the church, so she's used to belting out her songs, you know, and, and, and squalling, <laughs> you know. And you appreciate that, I think, when it comes to church. But I don't always appreciate that when it comes to singing, you know, just songs in general. You know, I just felt like at the end of the day, Friend of Mine was a great record. It was just a loud one. <laughs> but it is what it is. So congratulations to her. I appreciate you so much, Kelly Price. I do. Uh, Kelly Price definitely has my respect as a single songwriter and a producer. You know, that's pretty much when I, it, it's weird. When I think about my R&B divas, the thing that I appreciate about them most and that I gravitate to them very quickly, I gravitate towards, a, to gravitate to an R&B diva quickly 
if she is a songwriter, a producer, or a musician. That, to me, lets me know that she definitely can hang in there with the guys. And that's what I like most about her because this is a business where you definitely have to have, you know, be respected. And if you're not respected, you got to make sure that you can do what the guys do and even better, you know. And that's what I like most about Kelly Price. So for me, you know, she's definitely, you know, hands down in that category to me. I appreciate her so much for that. Uh, speaking of writing and producing, you know, we have Lauren Hill over here. You see how it just flows? See, like I said, I just like my conversations, you know, even with myself, like they just flow, you know. And speaking of that, writing and producing, we have Lauren Hill over here. And Lauren Hill is definitely uh, one who is writing her music, allegedly. <laughs> and I say allegedly simply because, you know, of that, wasn't she, like, sued for regarding this album, you know, a few years after it was released because people were, uh, the producers or the writers on the album were saying that, you know, she didn't, contribute uh, that they wrote the majority of their album. And now that I think about it, this is her only album. And that album was all over the place. Oh, gosh, that album was all over the place. But yeah, I think that she ended up uh, having to pay some of the writers and so on and so forth. Uh, and musicians who claimed that they, you know, well, they did a lot of the writing and producing as well. I just said to you like that. A multi-platinum album. I'm not quite sure how many albums that record sold. I mean, that record was all over the place. I I, I would like to think that that is definitely uh, sold anywhere between five to ten million albums. I'm sure of it. I'm almost sure. I'm sure that record was bananas. And then you have over here, well, I, I, you know what, I can't, I guess when we talk about singing, I would say Lauren Hill's reputation as a writer, to me, is not tarnished. I don't think so. Whatever happened with that album in what people were saying about that album. I don't think, no, I don't think that it was tarnished. Her reputation as a writer was tarnished. I would say that the thing that has kept her in limbo is the fact she never came out with a second album to put to rest whether or not if she could, if she couldn't do it. You know, and so... Yeah. So the guys on the album, some of the guys on the album, I think they call themselves New Ark, A-R-K. They filed a lawsuit against her and her management and the record company saying that she used songs, of, uh, she used their songs and production skills, but she did not give them credit. And they uh, claimed that they were the primary songwriters on a couple of tracks. And... <laughs> And who contributed what and so on and so forth became an issue. And I think they eventually settled out of court for around $5 million. So I'm not quite sure. You know, I, I don't know what to say, you know, about that. I, I don't, you know, when you're in the studio and you're recording and you're producing and all of that stuff and you're putting a song together, you know, you just really and truly never know. You know what is going on. So I would just simply say that you know she hadn't had the opportunity to prove herself again. Me, on the other hand, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to be a little bit. Uh, I don't know what to say about her. I don't. I would have to check her catalog. I don't know anything about her. Uh, just say welcome into you know R and B. 
the R&B diva world. <laughs> Welcome into the queendom. <laughs> but I don't know if I remember any songs by her. I don't think I do. I, I can't recall like what, what was going on for her to even be. I'm going to have to check her out <laughs> to see what, what it was, you know, that made everybody, you know, kind of flock towards her. So as we ending this, and I know we were talking about albums and you probably saying, well, he talks about them a lot, but he doesn't talk about the songs and all of that. Well, we'll get there. I'm talking about the diva and I'm using this as an opportunity to introduce these divas. You know, I think that if they got to the point where they were nominated for, you know, in Soul Train Music Award, that the album was great in most cases. Um, so we'll talk about that. And of course, as you know, Lauren Hill is the one who actually takes home the award for album of the year, a uh, female at the Soul Train Music Awards in 1999. <laughs> so congratulations to her. So anywho, on that note, we're going to end the video. Yes, that's right. We're going to end the video with the R&B Divas uh, album of the year, 1999. And don't forget over here that I believe in you putting your behind where your heart desires to be. I appreciate you guys for, you know, your support. Not only that. <laughs> Also, whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always tells me, baby, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. I love you guys out there. Thank you so much for your support. I hope that you're loving yourself because as it was told to me, if you don't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? But guess what? You can love somebody else if you don't love yourself, but what good is that? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next video. And until then, you know what to do. Take care of yourselves out there.